Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a dual unboxing for you of a couple different air fryers from the Instant brand, the makers of the Instant Pot. There are so many different kinds of air fryers and air fryer ovens uh, available now that if you're in the market for an air fryer, it can be really confusing to figure out what is the best one and what would work best for you. So hopefully this video is helpful to show you uh, what comes with each of these kinds of air fryers and just the, the difference in functionality. This one is the Instant Vortex air fryer. It has the handle and the basket. It's very much a basic air fryer. When you think of an air fryer, this is the style. And then this one here is the Vortex Plus air fryer oven and it is more of a mini oven style. It has the rotisserie for the chicken and all that. So it actually has a door that pulls open like a regular oven. So let's go ahead and get these unboxed and we can check them out and see the differences. This Vortex Plus oven, you can see it says it's 10 quarts and the Vortex air fryer says six quarts. But the way that the ovens cook is a little bit different. So it's not, it's not like a one, it's not like you're gonna be able to cook 40% more than in the other air fryer. It's a little bit tricky when measuring these by size like that. They both have a packet of paperwork for the air fryer oven. They have safety, maintenance, and warranty, and then the Vortex Plus Getting Started Guide. They have a Getting Started Guide and Safety Maintenance and Warranty. So let's do the air fryer oven first. I know it has a lot more accessories because it has things for the rotisserie and the smaller air fryer isn't gonna have quite as many accessories like that. These are all things for the rotisserie. Some more accessories in here. So here is a basket that you can use with the rotisserie and you can cook like french fries and different things in there and it spins while it cooks. It makes it cook evenly. I, I like the idea of this. Um, it is pretty difficult to clean these kind of things. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So there are three trays. I'm just gonna throw these in here and they're all non-stick. This one, I am guessing, goes down at the bottom to be a drip pan. So that's everything in the box. We've got the oven itself, the paperwork, uh, what you would need to do a rotisserie chicken, the rotisserie tool that you would use to take out either the chicken or the rotisserie basket back there. The regular air fryer is a little more straightforward. It doesn't have so many moving parts. That is what it looks like. Take the tape off the sides here and basket comes out like that. Here's the bottom of the basket and then here is the little tray that keeps things up off the bottom of the basket. And so that fits in just like that and it has like little rubber things on the side so it doesn't scratch the non-stick when you put it in, which is pretty nice. And then it's got this little handle that you can take it out for cleaning. And then this whole drawer just slides right into the air fryer like that. So there they are next to each other so you can get a good idea of the difference in size. The um, air fryer is just a little bit lower than the oven, which is something to keep in mind if you have low hanging uh, cabinets. The oven is just a little bit wider, uh, but not a lot. And if you did take into account the handle, it's about the same width. Okay, now let's get them plugged in and we can compare the different buttons and settings and controls. We have on this one, air fry, roast, bake, and reheat. And then on this one, we have air fry, roast, broil, bake, reheat and dehydrate. And then we have a time button and a dial here. And this one we have time and temp um, with the plus and minus buttons. So that's a little different. The um, oven has a light so you can check things out in there. Of course, a light wouldn't be very helpful on this one because you can't see into it while it's cooking. All right, so when you hit a um, setting like air fry, it start, uh, pops up start and cancel. Same thing on here. 
it pops up new buttons, start and cancel, that you can't see until you press the button. It's so crazy. So if I want to air fry here, um, I think I'd have to hit time to adjust the time, and you do that with the dial, and then hit temp to ad adjust the temperature, and highest is 400, and then I'd hit start if I wanted it to start, which I don't. On here, I'm going to hit air fry, and then I can just use the plus and minus for the time, and then the plus and minus to adjust the temperature. So broil is only 400 degrees. You can't adjust the temperature, and it takes away the plus and minus buttons, so you can't do that. But you can still adjust the time somewhat. So one thing to keep in mind is that there's actually a Instant Vortex Plus air fryer that has the dehydrate and the broil setting on this style of air fryer. So if those settings are important to you, don't feel like you have to get this model. You can get the upgraded version of the Vortex and it will have those settings. But besides those two settings that this one doesn't have, that this one has, the other settings that are common between both of them both cook the same way. The air fry, roast, and bake settings are all, they all cook exactly the same way. Um, you can set them between 1 and 60 minutes and then the temperature range uh, is 180 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and that's the same on both of the air fryers. The dehydrate setting on this one you can set between 1 and 15 hours and the temperature range is 105 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. The broil setting on here is not adjustable as far as temperature it's just 400 degrees and you can set it between 1 and 40 minutes but just keep in mind that if you hit air fry and turn it on to 400 degrees, it's cooking exactly the same way as if you were to hit broil. The reheat setting on either of these is um, 120 degrees to 360 degrees, so it can go down to a lower temperature than the other settings, besides dehydrate, of course. And um, the time could be set between 1 minute and 60 minutes on that setting. The last thing on here that I wanted to mention is the rotate button, and that is what you press to get the rotisserie to turn. If you have the rotisserie in with the chicken or whatever you're cooking on the rotisserie or the rotisserie basket, after you start the cooking, then you would hit the ro rotate and it would start turning. So in both of the manuals, they have an initial test run that you're supposed to do, which is just basically cooking uh, on air the air fry setting at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. I'm guessing that's to like burn off any chemicals that might be left in there. So I'm going to do that on both of them. And for anyone that's concerned, you don't have to be worried that I have both of them plugged in at the same time. My husband rewired our kitchen and he did a great job and I've never had a break or trip from cooking with multiple appliances in my kitchen at the same time. The initial test run didn't mention cooking with these in there, just with the drip pan at the bottom. So I am going to hit air fry. It's at 400 degrees. I'm going to put the time up to 20 minutes and hit start. And on this one, I'll hit air fry, hit time, go up to 20 minutes, go up to 400 degrees and start. So you can see that the cook time has not started counting down yet. Instant uh, brand has a preheat built into their air fryers, which is not the same on all air fryers. Um, so it will preheat for a little while before the cook time starts counting down. So that's something to keep in mind. Some recipes don't account for that, some do. I don't think it'll make that big of a difference, um, but it is something to keep in mind. I was about to wash my trays for the oven and I noticed that there's already scratches in the nonstick coating. There's some here and there. I don't. I don't think I was rough with it when I took it out of the box, but um, that's kind of disappointing. I'm not a huge fan of nonstick coatings. I, I just don't think that we know that they're healthy for us. And so I try to avoid them, but with air fryers, it's so hard to avoid nonstick coatings because it just seems like everything comes with them. Um, anyways, I was just a little bit disappointed to see that it's already getting scratched up. So you can see that that one has, um, preheated and now it's telling me to add the food, but it started by itself. I didn't have to open it to get it to start. This one is still preheating. And it makes sense that that one would preheat faster because it's smaller, so it's just gonna heat up faster than the bigger oven. 
So it took about two more minutes for the big air fryer oven to um, preheat than the smaller one. So I get a lot of comments on my videos where I talk about air fryers that say things like, an air fryer is just a convection oven, and kind of dismissing what an air fryer is. And while that's definitely true, an air fryer is a type of convection oven, the difference that you get is that the air fryer cooks in a very small space, and that intensifies the effect of the convection fan. So you're gonna get crispier results faster with the smaller air fryer than you will with a big convection oven. So what I found is when I am using different air fryers and different air fryer ovens, the bigger the oven that you use as an air fryer, the less uh, crisping results you'll get. Now I'm open to the idea that Instapod may have done something to make this one cook just the same as the smaller air fryers, so I'm interested to see how that's gonna work out. But from my experience cooking in several different sizes, um, from small air fryers to large air fryer ovens, the best results I've always gotten from the smallest oven. And that really does make sense when you think about how the convection fan works and how it dries out um, the inside of the oven so that the crisping can happen faster. It's easier and quicker to dry something out in a small space than it is in a big space. My oven here in my kitchen is a convection oven and it took me a long time to actually get my first air fryer because I just didn't think it was gonna be any different and I didn't wanna spend the money if it was gonna be exactly the same. But then when I did finally get an air fryer that was about the size of this one, and I used it for the first time, I realized that the convection effect was much stronger and I did get better results faster with the smaller air fryer. And then every time I have tried a bigger oven air fryer, um, I have been disappointed because my thought is I can just get the same results from cooking in my convection oven in my kitchen. So after this initial test is done, I'm going to cook up some frozen chicken strips in both and I'm going to do both layers here in the oven to see how the second layer cooks because I've had the experience in other ovens that the top layer cooks really well but the middle layer doesn't cook. It cooks basically like it's baking. So I want to see um, if that is the same in this one and then you'll be able to compare the difference between the chicken strips coming out of the different air fryers. All right, I can tell you right now that the house smells really chemically with cooking both of these brand new air fryers. Uh, hopefully that will dissipate as things burn off. Now I'm going to try cooking some chicken strips. They're just frozen um, chicken breast tenders. I'm gonna see how many will fit in here. We'll do four, they're really big. So that should be plenty. I wanna have a little space in between them. And for the oven, one thing I dislike about a lot of air fryer ovens, including this one, is that crumbs and oil are gonna start falling through here. You know, well, they're always gonna be falling through there if there's oil on what you're cooking. But as you pull it out after it cooks, you're just gonna drip oil and crumbs. <laughs> you have to have something ready to put it on immediately, which makes more dishes and is a little bit annoying. The um, ovens that have the basket or the tray underneath, and you can just pull the whole thing out, is a lot more convenient, I think. So I'm going to get a few chicken strips on each of these trays. We'll just do three on top and then I only have two left so we'll do two on the bottom. Since the air fryers are both already heated up, hopefully the preheat will be pretty minimal for both of them. So slide that right in there. There we go. So these chicken strips say convection oven uh, instructions here and convection oven instructions are great for cooking in an air fryer. Typically that's gonna give you a really good result. So these are um, 400 degrees, 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, so I am gonna just set both air fryers for 20 minutes and then um, they both have a feature where two thirds of the way through cook time they remind you to turn the food. So I'll turn them at that point and um, we'll see how they are. Air fry 400, and I already had it at 20 minutes, so it's all ready to hit start. And air fry 20 minutes 400 again, start. 
So again, the smaller air fryer uh, preheated about two to three minutes faster than the bigger air fryer. So I'm at seven minutes left here and nine minutes on that one. I think this one's about to tell me to turn food. There we go. That's the turn food uh, little warning there. Those are looking really good. Just gonna flip them over real quick. Once you put the drawer back in, it starts automatically. It remembers where the cooking, the setting was. I went ahead and turned the chicken strips here in the big oven as well. And I can already tell that the bottom layer isn't nearly as crispy as the top layer. So the same as I've experienced with other ovens like this, you can fit more in them than the smaller air fryers, but I find that you get about as much of um, the same space for the air frying effect as with the other one. If you want to cook something down underneath that doesn't need to be as crispy, then it's convenient to cook a couple things at the same time, but you just don't get double the amount of space to get a good air fry on your food um, that you do with the smaller air fry ovens. All right, these chicken strips are done. These ones still have, what, three minutes, two or three minutes left? Three minutes. And this is what they look like. They look gorgeous. Did a great job. These look perfect. Notice at about 30 seconds, the light comes on for you, so you can see what you cooked. see what they look like. I'll bring out both trays so you can see the difference between the top layer and the bottom layer. So a pretty massive difference in color between the top and the bottom layer. So you can totally rotate the trays in the middle of cook time. That's one way to avoid this, but you're just going to have to adjust recipes because you're going to have to end up cooking the food longer because of the adjustment because it just cooks slower on the lower level. It's just something you have to keep in mind. But um, here is what the ones in the smaller air fryer look like. The top layer, the bottom layer. I'll set them all next to each other so you can kind of see um, the difference. So there we go. That's from the smaller air fryer. That's from the top layer. That's from the bottom layer. And um, so these two I think are pretty comparable. Maybe the top layer one is a little bit darker but not a lot. I think they're pretty similar, but then that obviously is not air fried. It's just baked. So down in the comments, let me know if you have either of these models and what you think of them. I'd love to hear it. And if you're interested in more uh, recipes, like air fryer recipes that you could use uh, with either of these air fryer models, then um, I will put a link to my air fryer playlist here at the end, and you can go check that out. I'll see you again in the next video.